Ghostly tales, yet mirrors of human life. Hey everyone. Welcome to Encountering Chinese. Ghostly tales from Liao Zhai. Today, I'm going to tell you a story called A Bow. In the western part of Guangdong, there was a well-known figure named Sun Zichu. One of the reasons for his fame was that he had six fingers on one hand. Sun Zichu was simple and honest, not good at talking, and often believed in people's lies. If there is a singing courtesan among the people present, he will surely avoid her as soon as he sees her. Knowing his temperament, friends would playfully trick him into situations with a lady of the night, just to tease and amuse him. At such times, Sun Zichu would become embarrassed, his face turning red to the neck, and beads of sweat dripping down. Those watching him would burst into laughter, finding joy in his awkwardness. Consequently, People enjoyed describing his silly appearance, spreading jokes about him, and gave him the nickname, Soon Fool. In the local area, there was a wealthy merchant who was exceptionally rich, rivaling even noble households. Those who married into his family were all from wealthy and prestigious backgrounds. The wealthy merchant had a daughter named Abao who was extremely beautiful. Recently, the wealthy merchant was looking for a good son-in-law for his daughter. Upon hearing this, many young men rushed to the wealthy merchant's house to present their betrothal gifts, but none of them met the wealthy merchant's expectations. Coincidentally, at that time, Sun Zichu's wife passed away and someone took advantage of the situation to play a trick on him, urging him to propose to the wealthy merchant's family. Without considering his own status, Sun Zichu actually listened to the instigation, and through a matchmaker, approached the wealthy merchant's house. The wealthy merchant knew about his reputation but rejected him due to his poverty. As the matchmaker was about to leave, she coincidentally met Abao. Abao asked the matchmaker what was going on, and the matchmaker told her about Sun Zichu's proposal. Abao jokingly said, If he can cut off his sixth finger, I'll marry him. After the matchmaker returned, she conveyed Abao's words to Sun Zichu. To everyone's surprise, Sun Zichu exclaimed. This is not difficult. After the matchmaker left, Sun Zichu took up an axe and chopped off his sixth finger. With one swing, his hand throbbed with excruciating pain, blood gushing out as if it might cost him his life. It took several days for Sun Zichu to be able to get out of bed. He went to see the matchmaker again, showing her the hand with the missing finger. The matchmaker was astonished and hurriedly ran to a Bao's house to inform her of the incident. A Bao, upon hearing the news, was also greatly surprised and jokingly remarked. If he can remove his foolishness too, then I'll marry him. After hearing the matchmaker's relay, Sun Zichu vehemently defended himself, claiming that he was neither foolish nor silly. However, he had no chance to clarify things directly with a bow. Yet, he pondered that perhaps a bow wasn't as heavenly as people claimed, questioning whether she had the right to elevate herself to such a degree. Consequently, his previous intention to propose cooled instantly. 
Coincidentally, Qingming Festival arrived, and according to local customs, women would go out to play on this day. Many frivolous young men would also follow them, casually gossiping about the women. Some of Sun Zichu's classmates forcibly dragged him along to join the festivities. Others teased him, saying, Don't you want to see your beloved? Sun Zichu knew they were joking, but due to a Bao's mockery earlier, he also wanted to see what she was really like. So, he readily agreed and followed his friends, eagerly looking around. They spotted a woman resting under a big tree, surrounded by a group of unruly young men, forming a wall of people. The crowd speculated. That must be a bow. They rushed over and found a bow indeed sitting under the tree. Everyone carefully examined her and saw that she was gentle, beautiful, and unparalleled in the world. As more people gathered, a bow stood up and quickly walked away. The crowd was excited, discussing and praising a bow as if they were going mad, but soon Zichu remained silent. When the crowd dispersed, his friends looked back and found Sun Zichu still standing in the same spot, unresponsive to their calls. They jokingly asked, Did your soul follow a bow? But he remained silent. Since he was not known for talking much, they didn't find it particularly strange. Some pushed him, others pulled him, and they all went home together. After Sun Zichu returned home, he collapsed onto his bed and remained there all day. He slept deeply, oblivious to the calls of his family, who suspected he had lost his soul. They went to the wilderness to call his soul, but it had no effect. In desperation, they resorted to shaking him and asking what happened. He mumbled. I'm at a Bao's house. But when they tried to inquire further, he fell silent again, leaving his family bewildered. Initially, Sun Zichu, reluctant to part with a Bao, felt as if his body had followed her. He gradually clung to her clothes, and no one scolded him for it. He followed a bow back to the wealthy merchant's house, staying close to her whether she sat or lay down. At night, they slept together, their relationship harmonious and affectionate. However, he felt hungry and wanted to return home but lost his way. A bow often dreamt of being intimate with someone and asked for his name. He replied, I am Sun Zichu. A bow was surprised but couldn't reveal it to others. Sun Zichu lay in bed for three days, his breath weak, on the verge of death. His family, terrified, sent someone to inform the wealthy merchant, intending to call Sun Zichu's soul back. The wealthy merchant, upon hearing this, chuckled and said our two families have never interacted how could soon zichu have lost his soul in my house however soon zichu's family pleaded and the wealthy merchant reluctantly agreed the shaman brought soon zichu's old clothes and straw mat to the wealthy merchant's house a bow Surprised to hear about the soul calling, brought the shaman directly to her bedroom to perform the ritual. After the ritual, the shaman returned to Sun Zichu's house. Just as she reached the door, she heard Sun Zichu moaning on the bed. When Sun Zichu woke up, he could actually describe all the dressing tools in a bow's room, including their colors and shapes 
without making a single mistake. Upon hearing this, Abao was even more astonished, but privately, she also felt the deep and unwavering affection from Sun Zichu. After Sun Zichu was able to get out of bed, he continued to yearn for a bow. Whether sitting or standing, he was lost in thoughts and often forgot his own existence. He frequently inquired about a bow, hoping to be fortunate enough to see her again. Upon hearing that a bow would go to Shueiwa Temple to burn incense on the day of the bathing Buddha festival, Sun Zichu woke up early and waited by the roadside. He anxiously waited, his eyes fixed and dizzy. It wasn't until noon that he saw a bow arriving. A bow noticed Sun Zichu from the carriage and lifted the curtain to gaze at him without turning away. This excited Sun Zichu even more, and he followed the carriage. In the haste, a bow sent a maid to inquire about Sun Zichu's name, and he quickly responded. At that moment, he was so thrilled that his soul seemed ready to fly away. When the carriage disappeared, Sun Zichu returned home. However, his old ailment recurred, and he lay in a semi-conscious state, neither eating nor drinking. In his dreams, he often called out a bow's name and lamented that his soul couldn't follow a bow like it did last time. In the Soon family, there was a pet parrot that suddenly died. The neighbor's child played with the dead parrot on Soon Zichu's bed. Upon seeing this, Soon Zichu thought, If only I could turn into a parrot, I could flap my wings and fly into a bow's room. While deeply immersed in this thought, he realized his body had transformed into a parrot. Anxiously, he flew all the way to a bow's residence. When a bow saw a parrot flying in, she happily caught it and tied its ankles, feeding it sesame seeds. Suddenly, the parrot exclaimed, Sister, don't tie me up. I am Sun Zichu. A bow was shocked, untied the rope, and found that the parrot didn't fly away. A bow prayed. Your deep affection is already engraved in my heart. But now, you and I are on different paths, and how can a beautiful marriage remain intact? The parrot replied, Being by your side fulfills my wish. Others tried to feed the parrot, but it refused to eat until a bow personally fed it. When a bow sat, the parrot would land on her lap. When a bow lay down, the parrot would snuggle by her bedside. This went on for three days. A bow loved the parrot dearly, even sending someone to visit Sun Zichu privately. It was then she learned that Sun Zichu had been lying stiffly in bed, unconscious for three days, with his heart not completely cold. A bow prayed to the parrot. If you can turn back into a human, I swear to follow you until death. The parrot asked. Are you not deceiving me? A bow swore not to deceive, and the parrot seemed to ponder with a sidelong glance. Shortly after, as a bow was about to bind her feet, she took off her shoes and, unexpectedly, the parrot suddenly flew down, picked up the shoe, and flew away. A bow urgently called the parrot, but it had already flown far away. A bow sent an old woman to visit Sun Zichu's home, and by that time, Sun Zichu had already awakened. 
The people in the Soon family had just witnessed the parrot flying in with an embroidered shoe, but it dropped dead as soon as it entered the house, leaving everyone astonished. At this moment, Soon Zichu suddenly woke up and immediately asked for the embroidered shoe, leaving everyone puzzled. The old woman arrived and entered the house to visit Soon Zichu, inquiring about the whereabouts of the shoe. Soon Zichu said, The shoe is a token of a bow sincere promise. Please tell a bow that I will never forget her golden words. The old woman went back to deliver the message. A bow was even more amazed, so she deliberately let her maids leak the information to her mother. After investigating the truth, her mother said, This Sun Zichu has a good reputation and learning, but he is as poor as Sima Xiangru after picking a son-in-law for several years, we ended up with such a poor one. I'm afraid we'll be ridiculed by wealthy and influential people in the future. A bow, using the embroidered shoe as an excuse, swore that she would only marry Sun Zichu and no one else. The merchant couple, unable to resist their daughter, had to agree. When someone heard about this, they quickly spread the news to Sun Zichu. Soon Zichu was overjoyed, and miraculously, his illness immediately improved. The wealthy merchant planned for Soon Zichu to move in, but a bow said. A son-in-law should not stay in his father-in-law's house for too long. Besides, Soon Zichu's family is poor, and staying here for a long time might make him look down upon. Since I have promised to marry him, I am willing to live in a grass hut, eat wild vegetables, and be content. Therefore, Sun Zichu personally went to the merchant's house to marry a bow, and their reunion was as joyful as a separated couple coming together again. Worried that their daughter might suffer, the merchant couple gave Sun Zichu a substantial dowry. With the dowry, their life became much more comfortable. Sun Zichu, immersed in his studies, lacked skills in managing household affairs. A Bao, on the other hand, was adept at household financial management and never disturbed him with trivial matters. This way, three years passed, and the wealth of Sun Zichu's family grew. However, suddenly, Sun Zichu developed diabetes and passed away. A bow was devastated, her tears never ceasing, eventually leading to refusal to eat and insomnia every night. No matter how family members tried to persuade her, she wouldn't listen. One night, taking advantage of the quiet darkness, she hanged herself. The maids discovered it and rushed to rescue her. A bow was revived, but even after waking up, she still refused to eat or drink. On the third day after Sun Zichu's death, relatives and friends came to prepare for his burial. However, they heard moaning from the coffin. Upon opening it, they found that Sun Zichu had miraculously come back to life. He told his relatives and friends. After I died, I met Yama, the king of hell. Yama said that due to my simple and sincere life, I was appointed to be a lower ranking official in the underworld. As the underworld officials were about to place me, Someone reported to Yama that my wife was on her way. Yama checked the book of life and death and said, a bow is not supposed to die yet. But then, another underworld official said, a bow in the mortal realm hasn't eaten or drunk for three days. 
Yama then told me. Your wife's great loyalty and affection have deeply moved me. I grant you another chance at life. So, Yama sent someone to lead me on a horse and brought me back. After that, Sun Zichu's health gradually improved. In that year, it happened to be the year of the Triennial Provincial Examination. Just before the exams, Sun Zichu's classmates decided to play a prank on him. They came up with seven obscure questions and took Sun Zichu to a remote location. They told him, These are challenging questions we worked hard to obtain. We secretly present them to you. Surprisingly, Sun Zichu fell for their trick again. Day and night, he pondered over the questions and turned them into seven well-written essays. His classmates secretly laughed at him. However, the chief examiner at that time considered that using familiar exam questions might lead to plagiarism, so he decided to change the usual approach. When the exam papers were distributed, Sun Zichu discovered that the seven essays he had prepared perfectly matched the exam requirements. Consequently, Sun Zichu effortlessly secured the top position. The following year, he successfully passed the imperial examination, receiving the title of Hanlin. The remarkable stories about Sun Zichu reached the emperor's ears. The emperor summoned him for an inquiry, and Sun Zichu truthfully reported the events. The emperor was delighted and praised him. Later, the emperor also summoned a bow and rewarded her generously. In the story's conclusion, the author adds a commentary. He states that, People with a focused nature can consolidate their aspirations. Therefore, those who concentrate on their studies will produce well-organized essays, and those dedicated to their craft will excel in their skills. The author reflects on society, mentioning those who end up destitute and achieve nothing often consider themselves neither foolish nor ignorant. For instance, those who squander their family fortune for love or cause family disintegration due to gambling, are these the actions of foolish or ignorant individuals? The author concludes that excessively clever and cunning people are the truly foolish ones, emphasizing that Sun Zichu had no trace of foolishness in him. All right. That's all for today's ghostly tale. A bow. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Please also encourage everyone to comment and share more. We'll see you in the next episode.